Welcome. This is our second video in the LiDAR with Deep Learning series. Um, so now we're going to talk about where to get some of the uh, Python code for working with LiDAR data. So here I have on my GitHub, I have LiDAR-Py. And so the files I'm going to be working with are uh, can be obtained from this GitHub. Here I have them open in VS Code, and you'll notice this one file in green is the file I downloaded in the previous video uh, with the airport data. So there's a couple of three really um, Python files in here. So let's start with the view LiDAR file. And I've added, so there's this Frey Farm um, data set that comes uh, from the GitHub that's smaller, uh, smaller data set. And so, but I added this this one from the Chesapeake Bay over the airport. So we're going to work with this. So the first thing we're going to do is use last B to read this in. And then we're going to display this in three dimensions. Um, and you might need to download PyVista or last B to work with these, of course, to do a pip install. So we'll just run this. So it's going to read this in. And you can see down here that we're running it. It's read the data in. And it gives us this nice three dimensional viewer for working with our LiDAR data. So this is over the airport. We can zoom in and see some of the airport buildings and see a few of the airplanes in here. A lot of these stray dots that seem to be up in the air, those are uh, power lines or phone lines. Uh, there's a road over here. There's probably some cars that are on that road. If we go over here, we can see parking lots that are part of the airport. We can see here's the, the main parking lot um, and uh, housing development and what appears to be a body of water here. So that's the first file, just a simple viewer to take a look at your LiDAR data. The next file we're gonna look at here is this main file and I'm gonna switch it from the uh, the Frey Farm, which is listed here, and we'll work with the uh, Chesapeake Bay image. Um, and so it looks like I have to select my Python kernel, and so we'll run that, and then this will open it up in. All of the uh, the code, that, or a lot of the, the code we're using here is in this file here that accompanies what we have that's called um, LiDARPy, which is this file here. It has a lot of the functions that we're going to work with. And here in the notebook, we're going to import that and then be able to call, that, call those functions. So it was unable, oh, I uncommented the wrong one, apologies, here we go. So this will load that file into memory and save it as a, a variable called LDR. And then once that loads, we can show an image and this three is taking the third um, feature in the set of features that are computed. So this will load the data into memory and then it will create a number of features or feature layers. Okay, so we've loaded that in. It took 42 seconds. And then when we asked to see this layer, this layer is a standard deviation, so this gives us the standard deviation in each cell of the LiDAR heights, uh, the LiDAR points in the cell. We could do show image one, which will give us the maximum LiDAR return in each cell. So we've taken the LiDAR data, we've binned it um, to make raster files, and then this will save this as a PNG and save it as a TIFF. So we click those that will um, create a PNG and a TIFF that we can use for our deep learning models from the LiDAR data. So this is a, this PNG is what we get from 
uh, the output and it's a false color image of the LiDAR data using three of the different features for the uh, um, for the display and then the TIFF which we can't display here is a multi-band and it's around 10 bands um, and so here are we can show the uh, the min and the dim so on the right hand side we have what our current working method is to create a dim digital elevation model from this data and then on the left hand side is the minimum return um, for each square in the grid and so you can see the dim is roughly the minimum returns but we smooth out the, uh, the small differences so for displaying going to create the stretch function and this will create um, display of all of the different features that we have so there's the minimum return maximum return mean is average return standard deviation returns that often highlights vegetation um, there's an airplane flying up in the air there's the digital elevation model this is the height which is the maximum above the digital elevation model or maximum minus the digital elevation model and this is the minimum return minus the digital elevation model so this highlights the things that were removed when creating the digital elevation model then we have one more function here which is going to be important this and I don't know if it'll run it will save the PNGs um, and I guess I, I don't have the second image in here so you can list a bunch of file names here and it'll save the PNGs into a folder called image chips which I might need to create a new folder let's make that folder and so if we go over to see what save PNGs is doing and save TIFFs and go review you Um, we could go over to the LiDAR Pi and what that does is it takes the image here's for example save PNGs and it um, is going to create a PNG and it uses features number five one and six so you can change those numbers if you want to see different features in your PNG and it creates a tile of size 640 by 640 and so here's the default square 640 by 640 that's because the YOLO models tend to look for images that are 640 by 640 so that's what we're going to be using and so here are PNGs which are 640 by 640 chips from our original LiDAR image and so what we're going to do is we're going to be labeling these and then training our deep learning model on, on these images so this is basically what we've walked through here in this lesson video is how to create these PNG chips and some of the basic um, opening the LiDAR and turning it into either PNGs or TIFFs. And the TIFF file is going to have um, more than um, just the three colors. It's going to have all the features together stacked in an array. Thank you.